Yes, finally I've returned to this project. Uh, the Omnicord MIDI interface, now that the Omnicord's fixed in a previous video I, I covered a repair that I had to do on it. Um, I thought it was time to have another go at the code on this chip and um, see how I could improve it. Um, the main kind of issue that I was having with it is if you imagine uh, a standard keyboard as a MIDI controller um, you've got note on events when you press the key down and when you let go of the key you've got a note off event however you create that event that's a technicality but either way you've got note on and note off by a physical action there is no way you can trigger another note on after your first one without letting go of the key and if you let go of the key you send a note off so your note on and note off are always guaranteed by a mechanical action. The Omnicord is different. The way I've done the MIDI interface on this means that the physical action of strumming the strum plate turns the notes on, but as you can see on the screen here, I've got a screen recording going. I hope I can get this into uh, my editor and make this visible. The note off events are generated by a timer. On the Omnicord itself, as I've discussed before, we have this uh, sustain control and it's just an analog envelope. So the more you turn that up, the slower the envelope will release. And uh, I've got a headphone plug in this at the moment just to make the speaker quiet, but um, we needed to emulate that action by using a timer routine in the software. The problem I was having before where notes would get stuck especially if I change chord, which they now don't do. The problem I was having before is that uh, some of the notes would uh, get just get stuck and a big part of the reason that was happening was because my timer routines were useless. <laughs> what I've ended up doing is completely rewriting the note off routine. Uh, in the Arduino software and um, instead of it just listening to what's actually being strummed out of 13 notes on the strum plate it actually now fills in a table of all 128 possible MIDI notes and then it compares some data on that table to the current millisecond counter so it can turn off any possible note that's been triggered on the full MIDI scale it doesn't have to be just what's currently selected on the uh, strum plate itself um, I was having all sorts of sort of issues trying to figure out if it was a serial buffer overflow or anything like that those have all been increased so if I strum the notes you can see there hopefully uh, as the timer catches up 
and fills in and completes the note. If I adjust the timer, make it shorter, you can see the notes getting shorter because the note off routine is cutting in faster. So um, that's one of the first sort of hurdles I had to get over. The second one was, I don't know if you remember uh, on the previous video I did about this interface, if you double trigger the note it would get stuck. Now it doesn't and you, if you notice what's happening there I added a routine to make sure that every time you trigger a note that's already on it turns off and then turns back on the note. So however many times you tap it, it will it won't double up. So we're guaranteed that we get no no doubles and no hanging notes with this new routine. There's another feature as well that I've added to uh, the software, and that is uh, a running status for the MIDI output. If you don't know what running status is, basically it's a method where you can save bandwidth on the MIDI output and in your serial buffer by uh, reducing uh, the amount of MIDI data sent and it's not um, it doesn't affect the performance it's not like a lossy compression or anything like that what it does is for every MIDI event that you send let's say you send a note on it has to send three bytes across uh, the MIDI connection it has to send uh, what it is so it has to say it's a note event on channel one and then it has to give the note number then it has to give the note velocity if you give it a velocity of zero, it acts as a note off. So, although they're note offs, technically they're, they're note on events. So, in theory, every time you sent a note, you'd have to send uh, three bytes like that all the time. But MIDI's got this feature called running status, whereby if you send a succession of the same kind of events, so you send a succession of notes, for example, you only have to send that first byte, the type identifier, you only have to send that once and every successive note until you come to a different kind of MIDI event uh, doesn't need that first byte. It will keep the status, that's why they call it running status, it will keep the status and you've only got to send two bytes. So if you send ten notes, you don't have to send that first byte ten times, you've only got to send it once. So you save yourself nine bytes out of ten notes. And if you're sending a fast succession of note ons and note offs, such as that, 13 notes in a quick burst, it saves a lot of data in your serial buffer in the memory of the chip and it, sends, uh, it saves a lot of bandwidth going down the MIDI cable. One issue with it is if you leave it completely open to only trigger that first byte again on the next kind of event, let's say it's a sustain pedal or something like that. I found I could get into a situation where, for example, you might uh, change to a different bit of software or, or unplug the MIDI cable, plug it back in while the thing is still on. The next thing that you bring up or connect it to or make it interface with won't receive that first byte because this still thinks that uh, the other thing has received it and there's no control back to this to say oh I need that first byte again so sometimes it would just get stuck and it would start sending kind of garbage data down the uh, MIDI cable because the other thing had not had that first byte didn't know what to expect so what I ended up doing was putting a timer routine in this where um, it waits a certain amount of time between events or it counts the time between events if I don't touch anything if I don't send another note for um, it's about two seconds two or three seconds I think the next note that you send will have the status byte again so it will resync the, uh, the running status so if you send again a succession of notes running status will come into effect and it will lose that first byte on the succession of notes if you wait two or three seconds before you touch it again the next note that comes in will have that byte back on it. So it guarantees that uh, you can disconnect it, connect it, uh, bring up another bit of software or another instrument or whatever you want to something that hasn't already received that first byte 
and if you've not touched it for two or three seconds it makes sure that the next note you send will resync that running status. Um, I still don't think it's perfect and uh, it's one I was where again I'm going to live with it for a little bit, it's much better than it was. I'm not getting stuck notes as I say, I'm not getting um, the doubles that I used to get so we've got a massive improvement on that. The timing feels fine and um, there's a couple of things I've got to uh, improve on the control board and stuff like that, a couple of little mistakes I made on the um, on the circuit board itself. Uh, I managed to kind of fudge them on this one so I'm not too concerned of this as a prototype but going forward if I wanted to develop this a little bit more I would have to improve, uh, at least fix a few of the little mistakes I made on that board for example. The other issue is, uh, this the Omnicord's kind of a, a bit of a bugger for this anyway, if I unplug this you probably hear that buzzing and if I just mute my audio for a moment I'm not sure how the world that'll come across but when it sends MIDI events it does pop through the speaker ever so slightly and it does it does buzz that's obviously with the master volume right down if I bring the main volume up once it's on you don't really hear that buzzing too much but if you're just using it as a MIDI controller it's quite distracting <laughs> and I find it easy just to stick a headphone adapter or something like this or a headphone jack whatever uh, if I can reach it into the uh, plug just to shut it up and if you're using it purely as a MIDI controller it's much quieter. So I think that's about everything I wanted to speak about on this just to give a bit of an update on it and just to waffle on about it uh, that I've got a little bit further. If I do any more I'll do another video and if I choose to make them available somehow uh, I'll try and do that as well so watch this space. Thanks for watching. <laughs>